Hi, welcome back. My name is Larry. We're heading to Lake Alamo State Park. Uh, we're about 30 miles outside of it. I've been driving all morning trying to get here. I've never been here before, so this is all new to me. I'd like to uh, explore it with you guys. I'm going to meet a friend there, possibly a couple friends. I'm not sure who all is going to be there. And uh, yeah, it should be a really fun night, so stick around. Before I make it to the lake, I find a place on the side of the road that I think is worth taking a closer look at. This spot I noticed has most of the cactuses that uh, are, are pretty native to this area that would be really good examples to show you guys. So let me show you guys a couple of them. This one, first of all, would be a saguaro cactus. And uh, these things are the iconic cactus of Arizona. Uh, these things can get 40 feet tall and they live like 200 years. This cactus is actually called a buckhorn chola. Uh, it looks very similar to a teddy bear chola. In fact, I might be wrong. It might be one of the others. It might be one of the two. But uh, this thing is pretty vicious. They, they say that the, the needles come off in like a jumping fashion. I don't know what that means, but I don't get real close because I don't want to be jumping out on me. And uh, I know that cactus thorns suck to try to get out, so I'm not about to get any in me today. Okay, next on the list is this cactus. Uh, it's pretty sought after. Uh, I know that they sell a lot of these to put into like um, landscapes around houses and subdivisions and stuff like that. I don't remember what the name is. I will put it here below on the screen, but these are pretty rare, at least for me. I, I have not seen a lot of these. Um, I'm sure people that are from this area see them all the time, but I don't see a lot of these, especially ones this big. And if you kind of see here, there's a bunch of them kind of just clustered in this area. I mean, they're kind of ugly, but they're kind of neat in their own way. But just because I've never seen anything like it anywhere else in the United States, at least. That thing's big, too. I bet you that's 15 feet tall right there. So what's cool about this one that I don't see on a lot of other cactuses is there's actually little leaves. But then in between the leaves, you have these, you know, about one inch thorns, half inch thorns. And it's almost like stripes of green and, and brown or gray kind of going through these stalks. This is probably the first time I ever got up this close to one. It is pretty cool. I've never seen one this close. And it's kind of a love-hate thing. I don't know. It's kind of ugly. It's kind of cool. Anyways, I'm going to head back to the truck. Uh, we're going to get back on the road, head towards the lake. I think we're going to go through a mountain range. So hopefully we can find something cool to look at there. And I'm going to pay attention to where I'm walking so I don't get bit by a rattlesnake or step on a cactus. Let's get on the road. I'll see you guys in a minute. It's so crazy how flat it is like everything's so flat and then it just goes right up just flat and then just mountain ranges it's weird uh, it's just not I don't know um, I mean Arizona's got some pretty weird landscapes so I mean it's not that I'm not surprised it's just odd compared to what I'm used to so I don't know anyways yep So this would explain a whole lot about the landscape out here. Kind of like I was saying, um, if that part made it into the video, there's a lot of flat, just extremely flat land right up next to mountains everywhere out here. So it says the sands of time, 
Throughout geological time, the surrounding area has been shaped by violent volcanic activity, mountain building, and shallow seas. The sand deposited by these ancient seas have been shaped by the wind and plant life to form crescent-shaped dunes in the East Cactus Plain wilderness. So, yeah, I mean, it was just like a sea where I'm standing right now. I guess I would be underwater if I was here a million years ago. But uh, millions of years ago, large blocks of land began slipping past and pushing against each other. This still happens today, although the movement of very, is very slow. A huge amount of force is involved. How much, question mark, they ask? Enough force to push the mountains up along faults or weaker cracks in the ground. The mountains and valleys you see here formed were uh, vaults or where vaults exist. Um, so that would explain the mountains. Um, the extreme pressure found at these vaults created mineralized rocks containing precious metals. Miners working the buckskin rawhide vault have recovered more than 25,000 tons of copper and 15,000 ounces of gold out of these here hills. All right, I promise we're gonna get to the lake, but I just happened to spot something in the tree and I wanna see what this is real quick. Check this out. something in it if it's anthrax and I die uh, you'll know where I'm at I guess but let's check out what this is geocaching.com game piece Geocaching is an any day, any time adventure that can take you to amazing and beautiful places. The way it works is simple. Just choose the geocache that you want to find, then navigate to its location. What you're looking for varies. Geocaches come in different sizes, shapes, and difficulties. Geocaching isn't always easy, so it's okay to get excited when you discover the cache. After finding it, sign the logbook Trade knickknacks if you want, and log your find online. When you're done, just put the geocache back where you found it, and you're on to the next one. That's cool, I've never found one of these. Awesome. I hope I'm going the right way. Um, Maps is pretty much saying that I'm gonna be parking my car here in about four miles. I don't know why. If it's gonna be a dirt road or what, I don't, I don't really know what's gonna go on. I'm hoping I'm going the right way, but we will see in due time. I just need to hurry up because somebody's behind me and I'm going too slow. Yep. Believe it or not, I arrive at a parking lot where I park my car and get out and walk. I'm right across the way from uh, my friends. Um, I got the camping spot directly across from them, luckily. Unfortunately, there's zero cell phone service here, so I'm gonna go hunt down some service, and we're gonna go down and check out the dock by the lake. So let's go check it out. So I made it here, Lake Alamo State Park. Uh, it's pretty empty, there's not a lot of people here. There's only like two accesses, I think, to this lake that I'm aware of, so this being the main one and nobody's here, but this is the boat ramp and the dock. I was told that I would have cell phone service here at the dock and I don't. So uh, if you're coming here and plan on entertaining your kids with internet, this might not be the place. But if you're coming here to get away from the internet, this is exactly the place you're looking for. It's a beautiful lake. Just pulled up here to the Bill Williams Lookout area. It looks like we'll uh, be able to see the entire lake from up here. 
but let's go check it out oh and you can see the dam so that should be a pretty good sight to see as well so let's check it out So that was a lot of fun. I got to hang out with my friends, uh, drink a few beers, catch up on some stories, had dinner. It's 7.30, they went to bed. Um, I'm actually gonna hang up these lights in the camper here. This time, uh, this well, this is attempt number two. So this time though, I brought something extra that will uh, allow me to actually install these this time. But uh, for now, I'm going to drink some coffee and warm up a little bit because it actually is kind of cold outside. And then we'll get started on this project. I've got these little hooks. I don't know if you can see it. Just little 7 8 inch hooks with uh, thread on the side. But this time I have a drill bit so I can pre-drill the holes. Last time I tried this I didn't pre-drill the holes and I couldn't get that dull little point into the, uh, into the paneling on the walls. So now we're going to get it. morning I'm gonna try and go do some fishing this morning um, we'll see what we catch but until then I'm gonna make me a breakfast sandwich or two and then uh, yeah So yeah, it's windy. Um, we're gonna still try fishing off the bank, but I'm not. I'm not. I don't have high hopes. We didn't catch anything, we didn't even get a bite, but we went back to camp, had an awesome Thanksgiving Day lunch, because today's actually Thanksgiving. You know, uh, good friends, good food, I couldn't ask for anything better. This video, though, probably makes no sense, but due to time constraints, I'm back on the road already, and uh, yeah, so I appreciate if you stuck it out this long. So until next time, I'll see you guys then. Thanks, bye.